The Kursk submarine disaster is one of the most tragic and defining events in recent naval history, encapsulating the perils faced by submarine crews and the limitations of rescue operations under extreme conditions. The Kursk, an Oscar II-class nuclear-powered submarine of the Russian Navy, was one of the largest attack submarines ever built, famed for its advanced technology and weaponry. On August 12, 2000, during a major Russian naval exercise in the Barents Sea, a catastrophe occurred aboard the Kursk that led to its sinking. The submarine had been participating in maneuvers and was scheduled to conduct a practice torpedo firing. Tragically, a torpedo malfunctioned and exploded, setting off a series of events that would culminate in one of the worst submarine disasters in history. The initial explosion that occurred in the torpedo compartment was devastating but did not immediately sink the submarine. However, it likely disabled the submarine's electrical systems and incapacitated or killed many of the crew in the forward sections. This first explosion was followed by a much larger secondary explosion a few minutes later, which was powerful enough to register on seismographs across northern Europe and was later confirmed to have been the detonation of several warheads aboard the submarine. The Kursk quickly sank to the seabed, approximately 108 meters below the surface. All 118 crew members aboard the submarine were trapped. In the aftermath of the sinking, the Russian Navy did not immediately acknowledge the disaster. Once the situation became known, the Russian government initially rejected offers of help from other countries, including British and Norwegian teams that had advanced rescue equipment. A few days later, as the situation grew more desperate, Russia called for international assistance. However, it was too late. When Norwegian divers were finally able to open a hatch on the submarine, they found it flooded, there were no survivors. It was believed that 23 crew members had survived the initial explosions and gathered in the ninth compartment, the last to flood, but they eventually succumbed to suffocation. The Russian government faced significant criticism both domestically and internationally for its handling of the disaster. The initial reluctance to accept foreign help, the delays in the rescue operation, and the lack of transparency contributed to a national and international outcry. President Vladimir Putin, who was relatively new in office at the time, was criticized for his response and the perceived indifference of the Russian government. The disaster highlighted several issues within the Russian Navy, including inadequate rescue capabilities, poor maintenance, and outdated equipment. In response to the Kursk tragedy, subsequent reforms were aimed at improving safety standards, rescue capabilities, and operational procedures within the Russian military. The Kursk was eventually raised from the seabed in 2001 in a complex salvage operation, primarily to recover the bodies of the deceased crewmen and to remove the nuclear reactors and torpedoes safely. The operation provided some closure to the families of the deceased and offered lessons to maritime and military operations worldwide on the importance of safety and rapid response in submarine operations. Initial denial of disaster, the Russian Navy and government initially downplayed the severity of the accident, delaying the release of information. This lack of transparency exacerbated the situation and hindered early rescue efforts. Refusal of international help, in the critical early hours following the disaster, Russia refused international assistance. Offers from British and Norwegian teams, which had the capability to potentially rescue any survivors, were initially rejected, a decision that was widely criticized later. Delayed response. There was a significant delay before the Russian authorities acknowledged the gravity of the situation and accepted international help, which likely cost the lives of any crew members who might have survived the initial explosions. Cause of explosion, the disaster was triggered by an explosion of a torpedo due to a faulty practice torpedo fuel. 
The malfunction led to a massive secondary explosion of warheads aboard the submarine, illustrating severe lapses in munitions safety and handling. Survivors' last moments, evidence suggested that 23 crew members survived the initial explosions and lived for several hours or even days within a rear compartment of the submarine. They ultimately died due to suffocation, which highlights the tragic nature of their final moments, knowing rescue was not forthcoming.